This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Get $100 off select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash PC per 100 and using promo code PC per 100 at checkout. All right, let's do this. Three, two... Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 498 being recorded on May 2nd, 2018. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm a suddenly unmuted Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malventano. And now he's suddenly remuted. I guess. Strange that. Uh, well, welcome. you know, I got to type something, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Get rid of that new keyboard. We don't remember. The, here's the rule. No, no cherry keyboards. Old new keyboard. Yeah, no cherry keyboards on the show. Sorry, it's a rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. We record on Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern at pcper.com slash live. Uh, you can see us do where we talked approximately 20 minutes about shaving techniques uh, and somebody putting a straight razor to your throat. And um, that's the kind of magic you don't get if you just listen into the recorded version of the show. Um, so again, pcpro.com slash live. If you need a little reminder, and I say this with a little bit of irony, if you need a reminder about the show, you can go to pcpro.com slash subscribe, and you get this little page here that asks for your name and your email address, and we basically will send you an email before we do our show most of the time, or any other show most of the time. PCPro.com slash subscribe for that. We still have our Patreon campaign running, of course. It is patreon.com slash PCPer. You can go there. And uh, this is your way to become a regular monthly recurring contributor to the website, to the to the team here. Um, it could be a dollar a month. It could be three dollars a month, five, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred, whatever you want it to be. Literally any individual uh, contribution helps and and means a lot to us. Um, you could you helped us take us from from this website to the screenshot of uh what game was that ken that's um oh uh, uh dishonored dishonored yes thank you yeah. it, to this picture of josh in the bathtub oh, God. and really what isn't that the done? progression you want to see in life and actually uh yeah so you can do that and obviously as not obviously but you as know what the is, best thing about that picture is it's in black and white you may know it <laughs> not know it but i was freshly shaved did you have a rash anywhere? <laughs> Do you want no the answer to that see. question? I don't. I don't actually. I'm yes, moving you know, on. I was Vegas. Mo- <laughs> moving on. <laughs> As is always the case, if you become a new patron and or increase your patronage during the recording of the show, I will call out your name and thank you personally with whatever you put in the name field. So keep that in mind. Uh, as part of the patron, Patreon campaign uh we do a mailbag as well that uh you can see here alan did this week's episode somebody's asking about your headset you're using it's an akg what uh hsc okay that's 271 i said hsc or hsd i didn't know which 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 the, uh, H- the d model is a dynamic mic i like the condenser mic okay got that's it that's what the c is for so this is where we go answer some questions like uh, hey how about building a 60 drive storage array sounds dumb right uh ssd is improving game frame times maybe you know those types of questions mm-hmm. alan will answer those for you i just recorded one for this friday as well you can find those on our youtube channel or just going to pcper.com and we post them on uh, on Fridays as well. Uh, and of course, speaking of everybody needing more Josh Tech, it is time for everybody to learn about the PC Per Merch Store, which is at bit.ly slash PC Per Merch. Or joshtech.com. Or joshtech with two Ks dot com. <laughs> How else would you spell it? Just a kick. Which uh, gets you such amazing options as Death Wish Raid, which is the shirt I'm wearing today. Hot Dog Down the Hallway, which is a shirt I will probably never wear. Uh, Super Pipe, <laughs> the PC Pro logo, and of course... Um, the world famous mugs. World famous mugs and the Josh Tech t-shirt. Josh Tech, Josh Ooh. Walrus, if you will. Right there. And I, then you. people keep asking, where's the tusks? And I guess that it's supposed to be a baby walrus. Mm-hmm. Or female, hairless. your choice, right? You know, whatever. Sure. I, think, I like the glasses. I think, yeah. I think if you don't have this mug on your desk, you're probably a loser. And also above your desk, you should have a, um, a, uh, uh, it's not just a print. It's a it's canvas, canvas print, if yeah. you will. Right. Can we, can we I was going to get one, but then. 
then my 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 wife kind of destroyed our finances again. So maybe next month. Maybe next month you can hang in yeah. like in front of her like portion of the bathroom or something, right? So she remembers yeah, or, her every day. You know, it could it could be a place of honor by the uh, uh, there's room by the uh, F four Falcon. <laughs> That's true. Me. That's it right. Is there is there. a spot. There's. A, it's like Can it's we well Photoshop sp- him piloting the F four Falcon. <laughs> Get on it, Jim. Probably could. Maybe. Maybe he's, he's working on it right now. All right. Uh, let's move into the topics for the week. First, uh, we talked about AMD's earnings last week. We're going to talk about Intel's earnings this week, which were actually last week, but we didn't have a show since. Um, Josh, you wrote this up. Uh, you have the subtitle here of 2018 being a banner year, um, being Meaning that they just made a lot of money. They sure did. How much money? Would you like me to talk about it? Uh, at least for a minute or two, sure. Okay, well, usually first quarters are typically the slowest quarters of the year. It's it's post-holiday rush. Everybody who's, you know, bought something typically has. Uh, you've got some, you know, revenue coming in through retail streams and OEM, but it's it's not like the buildup for Q3 with back to school and Q4 with holiday. Q1's usually slow. Right. Not for Intel. As you can see, in between Q1 2018 and Q1 2017, they made $1.3 billion more. Up 9%. Well, they, they had $16.1 billion in revenue. Not that they yes. made more net wise, but yeah. Well, no, no. Well, yeah. I mean, they only I'm netted about... four point five billion this past Gosh, quarter. Only four point five billion. Let's yeah. compare that to AMD's revenue of one point six five billion. Revenue. With forty-one was that eighty-eight, eighty-one, or forty-one million? Uh, it was eighty-eight or debt? eighty-one million dollars of profit. Yeah. So, yeah. So eighty-one. Yeah. So in case you're worrying about like developmental resources. $81 million in profit versus $4.5 billion mm-hmm. in profit. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it's difference. kind of ludicrous. But, uh, you know, I, nobody really knows what they were expecting. Obviously, it was something quite good. I mean, it's it's lower than uh, Q3 of 2017, but not by a significant amount. And that's pretty impressive given what really did they release new in that quarter. Yeah. Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean, especially they're just the shipping consumer space. A lot of stuff. the The biggest growth is is going to be in the data center, and um, they're really hitting some some strides there. Um, if you you know look at the PC market, it's what eight point two billion. And if you add up all those numbers for data centric, it's it's you know it's it's seven point nine billion. Yeah. They're within um, you know like one percent of of what the uh well not one percent but you know what i mean it's 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 very very close yep to splitting it now to the 50, PC 50. market yeah and uh data centric uh the the group is is i mean those are all high margin parts mm-hmm. there's nothing inexpensive and, and cheap there um I mean, Internet of Things. Okay, that's a little cheap, but that was less than one billion dollars. It was eight hundred and fifty <laughs> million. Nothing. It's nothing. Still overpriced. <laughs> no. As compared to the big cheese, five point two billion in data center group, and and that is sustainable. That yeah. is something that people will continue to buy as we, as a society, crave more and more performance. More data, more storage, more everything from these little handheld devices that are just parasites in our lives that we <laughs> hold up to our face. Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, okay. Let's Money, good, fine. Uh, what about their announcement about the 10 nanometer stuff? Okay, well, if you notice, with their 2018, I, I said the cracks start to appear. Yep. Um, 2018 is going to be a great year for Intel, and they're probably going to make record amounts of revenue throughout the year. But then things get kind of crazy in 2019 because Intel used to have essentially 18 month to two year lead in process technology, where even if they had a bad design, they could use process technology to make it better than the Competition. Now, this kind of broke down in 2004, 2005, when AMD, for example, used using uh, 
130 and, a, and 90 nanometer for their Athlon 64. But even though the Pentium 4s were a jump ahead of them in process tech, AMD still had the better performing product. It was lower power. It was faster by far per clock. All these other wonderful things that they brought to the table back in, God, 14 years ago? Yeah. I had some hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they AMD was able to kind of trump process with design. And that was kind of a one-off deal. I mean, we hadn't seen that since, you know, the K7 was kind of that way. But, you know, Intel had the Pentium 3 and then they used process tech to kind of get above that. Um, but AMD never had much more than about six or seven months of having um, kind of an, a pl- level playing field in terms of process technology. Now we're seeing that kind of turn around. Um the 12 nanometer product from AMD is is actually very close in terms of performance and density as uh, Intel's original 14 nanometer process. Now, and the to 14 be fair, nanometer to, plus, to even AMD's, to be fair, even to AMD's Global Foundry's 14 nanometer. Yeah, I mean, Global Foundry, I'm sorry. The process that they're using, which is Got from it. Global Foundries. Got it. But uh, then the 14 nanometer plus and 14 plus plus from Intel actually go a little bit backwards in, in um, density to improve on speed and power performance. Um, and they're going to be utilizing this 14 nanometer process for probably at least a year in most of their mainstream parts. They've got some 10 in, well, they say they've got some 10 in nanometer production right now, but it's extremely limited, and I have no idea what the hell that actually is. But we're looking at second half of 2019 before they get their 10 nanometer parts out, which is interesting because AMD is receiving 7 nanometer from TSMC Vega parts right now that uh, they're qualifying and getting moving along and uh from what we saw or heard from from lisa is they will get their seven nanometer um ryzen 2 well zen 2 based parts a little later this year and so we're we're going to be curious to see what kind of uh what kind of ramp amd has with ryzen 2 because the seven nanometer process from global foundries is again very similar to Intel's 10 nanometer that they still haven't got off the ground. So AMD could actually be on equal footing for the next several years in terms of process, performance, and density. And this is an area where they can possibly show off any design uh, advantages they have over Intel. Now, I'm not totally saying Intel's out of it, because no. they still have excellent design teams. They've got a far larger R&D budget, as we <laughs> saw. Right. Uh, but the playing field is is much more even than we have seen in a long, long time. And Intel has seriously wasted away its process tech advantage over these past five years. I mean, sure, it started with 22 nanometer, and they are you know, first there, and they were first at 14, but 14 kept going on and on and on and on. And how many, I mean, you could probably name them all. How many, how many uh, Don't damn make me. lakes? You know, Haswell, was Haswell? It's not a lake. It doesn't say lake after it. It's a well. Yeah, but I think Haswell was the first, <laughs> first 14. It's a small it? lake. Underground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh yeah, it's uh, it's going to be 2019 is going to be very interesting because we're also going to see AMD ramping up Epic throughout the rest of this year. All right. And even though they're only going to take up, you know, maybe five to eight percent, you know, eight percent is, is pretty optimistic of, yes. of the data group. That is a significant chunk of change. And that's a significant chunk of change going from Intel to AMD. Yep. I mean, you're talking about. $2 billion quarters from AMD, which we have not seen in a good 15 years. Well, yeah. 14 years. Yeah. All right. Following up more with Intel, uh, you know, forever, probably until I retire at the very least. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Ken, let's talk about the surface book, specifically the surface book Two. wait, 
apparently I missed a link. Hang on a second. There it is. The Surface Book 2, the which I didn't actually realize until you put this in the title of this review that there's two different sizes of it that I should be paying attention to. Yeah, there's a the 13 and a half inch, which is the same form factor as the original Surface Book. Then they also introduced this generation a 15 inch. Okay. Option. I would imagine. The, a 13 by 2, 15 inch screen seems large. Yeah, it seems a yeah. little out of whack. Yeah, I, I used one when I went to buy this because I did buy this personally. We didn't get this sent from Microsoft. It's course. in the disclosure statement, damn it, Ken. Yeah. It's, it's in there. Spoiler. You got it. Spoiler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was looking at the 15, I'm like, that is way too big as a usable. Like, <laughs> like it, it does detach still. Think of a 15 inch 3 by 2 tablet. That is ridiculous. So but if you're drawing on it, you know, maybe. Well, sure. What uh, So what are the specs here? What are we looking at? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? So the big changes here are on, they did kind of a split thing with the CPU. They have the 7300U, the dual core hyper threaded U series parts in the 13 and a half inch without the discrete GPU. And then in the models with the discrete GPU, including the 13 and a half and the 15 inch, they do the i7-8650U, the quad-core hyper-threaded mobile part. Uh, we've seen a lot of these 8th gen parts. They're, there's a pretty big performance increase, a, as we've seen across many laptop. So that's it's the f- only Microsoft product with 8th gen huh. processors in it. The okay. Surface laptop was never updated, which is disappointing. Yeah. Mm. Beyond that, the model we took, to look, took a look at has 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig NVMe SSD, and a GTX 1050. Okay, that's a that's a compelling combination at least. Yeah, yeah. So what what stood out to you in terms of did you like to use it? And again, it's not the first time Surface Book has existed, but you got to use it as your primary yeah, device. Yeah, a lot for a more time bit. with this one than because yeah. you did the review of the last one. Did you one. find usefulness on the detachable tablet part of it? I it might as well not detach to me. I, yeah. I think folding it back on itself is interesting if you're on like a plane and want to watch a movie you want to watch some media you have and right. you don't want to deal with the but a yoga style laptop would be able to do that as well yeah, exactly yeah if you were drawing also as well kind of detaching it there's a photo later in the in this page i think where you kind of detach it and put it back on itself so it's at a shallow angle uh right. so you can draw on it keyboard and trackpad that, keyboard and trackpad good though yeah the trackpad is honestly the best trackpad I've ever used on a PC. Mm. I think it might even oh. be, it's as good, if not better, than the current MacBook trackpads. It, it says a lot. smaller than the current MacBook trackpads. Yeah. I'd like to see a much bigger version of this, but absolutely no complaints on the trackpad. The keyboard is super solid. There's, I'd say, a medium amount of travel, but since it's made of aluminum and has a backplate and doesn't have the motherboard or anything in there, it only has the GPU, some smaller components, and battery. Yeah. Just the kind of the impact is very solid. It's a nice slab of aluminum with solid a solid okay. backplate, and you can just kind of strike at it, like Josh was doing earlier on his keyboard. <laughs> and he muted himself, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what it looks like when it's when you flipped it and you fold it down into its tablet form. It's really form. like a 10 degree yeah. angle, just a very slight did sort you ever, of inclination. Did you ever lose any change or any pens or pencils down in this gap? I didn't, I didn't lose anything <laughs> in chance. it. Uh, yeah. One important thing to note is that the Surface Book 2 is also the only Microsoft Surface product with a Type-C connector. Oh. So they It charges the, with that? It can charge with that. So oh, they've had okay. the proprietary Surface connector for their docking and stuff. You can see on the right there of the Type-C connector that's also on the tablet itself. So you can the Type-C the, is? No, no, no. The, the Surface, Surface connector. connector. So you can okay. charge the tablet yeah. itself. Uh, but... I'm it. really not likely to use that configuration, but so the service yeah. connector does data, video, and power. The Type C on this will do all of this as well, but it's only a Gen One port. It's not a Thunderbolt Three port. Okay, not a Gen Two port. So yeah, only so do it's five gigabits, gigabits per second. second. Performance limited. Yeah, I just as well. I really want them to go Thunderbolt Three on yeah. the surface devices and just ditch the surface connector. It I'll is magnetic and nice and has its advantages. It's just proprietary. All of the like the dock is expensive that uses it. It's mm-hmm. just, it feels like yeah. we're beyond that. Is that the same connector that's used on the original Surface Book? Uh, yeah, it is. 
There's some standard for that. It's like charge port or something, but you can never find mm. adapters yeah. for it. I, I bought a generic one off of eBay because my girlfriend actually has the original Surface Book, and she kept she lost one of her spare power adapters because she yep. had two, and I bought just like a generic Amazon one that hasn't caught on fire yet. But So you can <laughs> get generic products, but like the docking station, no one's going to make a generic one of those because it's such a proprietary thing. One nice thing about the power adapter that you can see the photo of here is they still include a type A USB port on it, which yep. I don't think you're going to use very often, but if you're in a spot where you don't have a lot of wall plugs, the ability to plug in your phone, especially on a port limited laptop like this, where you only have yep. two type A ports. I, I saw amazing. on my most recent work trip, I saw two people do this when we were at meetings, right? And everybody was like plugging their laptop into the power outlet in the middle of the conference table. Yeah. Right. And they would plug their phone into that adapter. That way you're not taking up two. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's probably a fast charge port, like two amp at least coming yeah, out of there. Yeah, probably. I think it's two point four amp. So very cool stuff. What, so what's the again since the, since the Surface Book itself is not a new form factor, what is what is performance like? Any stand out here? We actually see a really big performance uptake going to the eighth gen processor. It's sort of the second most powerful eighth gen device we've tested. Yeah, the XPS thirteen ninety three seventy still far and away blows everything Which is away. Weird, but awesome. Like Dell has done an amazing job on that. They're running yeah. that part at 28 watts most of the time in that notebook. If you monitor it, like it, the thermals and that thing are great. Yeah. So <laughs> like this this result here, the handbrake result. Yeah. And this one, it lower is better, right? Yeah. It's time um, elapsed time. So the like, look how much better this Dell XPS 13 is compared to the Surface Book 2. And then we go to evaluate why that would be the case. And here you can see the long-term frequencies of these processors. The, surf, the Surface Book 2 is about a gigahertz slower than yeah. the XPS 13. They start 70. out you know, about the same. Maybe yeah, the Surface Book is even Surface a little bit higher. The Surface Book 2 is great at peaking. I think it might peak a little higher than the XPS 13 in some situations, just with how it's thermally tuned. I think the Surface Book 2 never really gets loud or warm, so Microsoft is obviously has a trade-off there they're clocking lower setting yeah. a lower power limit to prevent having to ramp up the thermal solution mm -hmm. but i mean it shows in extended cpu workloads like video encoding yeah interesting stuff uh pc mark results are good uh especially if you look at gaming and digital content creation because these other three machines are using integrated graphics or wait yeah, they're all using integrated graphics the hp nv x360 is using uh, um, the zen book is using an mx150 oh is it I believe so. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, the HP Envy is using the the Ryzen mobile part, so it's it's the green bar there is higher. But clearly, the GTX 1050 um, a noticeable step above the storage performance. Pretty good. Three? No, no, no. no. Two point eight awful. by three hundred. Yeah, it oh. seems to have a hard limit of about three hundred to three hundred fifty megs per second. Right. We tried we tried some stuff. We, like there's a Microsoft Surface NVMe driver. We tried replacing that with the inbox driver. Right. This is a Samsung PM nine sixty one part. It is capable of more. It's obviously being tuned in firmware for Microsoft to be limited to be more conscious of power consumption and better battery life. But honestly, man, yeah, that's like too low. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we saw the <laughs> XPS thirteen do something similar, but it was around five hundred megs per second, yeah. right? I believe. Yeah, oh, three hundred. It's a SATA two, er, SATA two SSD. Like, yeah, it's not even a SATA three SSD at that point. Mm. It's that's, just that's too interesting. Low. Like I get the, I get it. We, you don't need a gig and a half per second right on a laptop like this, but. Right. You you're need past, more than 300 megs. You're past the point of diminishing returns where you're spending more time doing the right and using some more power than you could have if you just used, say, you know, basically my point is you would you could double the write speed in that case and not double the power. Mm. Sure. Right? Because yeah. you're, just, you're just wasting time at that point. And, where and the, if you think about active. it, your internal NVMe SSD is slower than... Uh, potentially USB slower drives. than a USB 3 device you can plug into it, yeah. like the yeah. Samsung T5. Yeah. What? <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah. If you have fair, yeah. NVMe should not be slower than like USB. Your internal connected. drive should not be slower than an external USB drive. Mm, in yeah. never. <laughs> that makes sense. If you when you looked at graphics comparisons, you just basically did some game testing here. Uh, Surface Book 2, which has GTX 1050 versus the Acer Swift 3 that uses an MX 150. Uh, not really a big competition here. Yeah, so we didn't... 
I was having some issues with a, our Ryzen 5 2500U platform, which is kind of the Windows install on it, and couldn't quite get it up and running in time. But if you look back at our performance look of Ryzen Mobile, it falls short to the MX150 in just about every scenario. So it's even it's, it would be even below the MX150. Right. So it's not exactly a comparison that's needed here because the GTX 1050 blows the MX50 MX150 out of the water. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So, I mean, being able to play, so you, like you did Far Cry 5 at 1080p, low settings, but 1080p, and it was able to get 41 yeah. frames per second out of it. I mean, I, everything seems playable at 1080p. I would probably go to like 16 by 9 and turn up some settings before I'd go to 1080p on a lot of these titles. Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, and, and Doom, so, Doom so, 1080p, Vulcan, paying, yeah. playing at 76 frames per second. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Someone asked in the comments about resolution scaling. I ran, I actually ran all of these on the display of the notebook, and mm. all of the games handled that pretty well. 1080p scaling to the 3 by 2 display didn't look bad, but a lot of games now have support for 3 by 2s Odd aspect ratios like 3 yeah. by 2 and 21 by 9 and, and oh, stuff like that. So that's probably the better option is to find the nearest 1080p-like resolution for 3 by 2 Right. Thermal performance looked good, meaning that uh, uh, we were talking about on the previous page, where kind of the performance of the first run of Dirt Rally versus after playing the game for 40, or having it, the benchmark at least, loop for 45 minutes and getting that last result, difference of only a frame per second. So that means that it was consistent, right? Um, and, and it's still never, like the device never really got what I would consider hot yeah. while gaming after 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very well tuned to be a good user experience as like having this on your lap. They talk about like, Intel always talks about like touch temperature, right? Like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get burned by this device, right? And the you performance know what the best is good. Part of that picture is what you can actually see the motion blur in the trees <laughs> and the flare. Whoa! <laughs> I know, to mind blown, dude. It's actually interesting because you can see the GPU oh. in the base, and then the CPU in the in the tablet itself, right? Like you can see a hot yeah. area under the keyboard. Yeah, that's true. Uh, battery life also very good. Yeah, just over 10 hours. Uh, there's obviously battery life in the tablet and the base itself. It's combined a 75-watt-hour battery, which is pretty awesome. So kind of the first laptop we Better tested in a long time. Better than even the XPS 13. Above 10 hours, yeah. yeah. That's that's Nothing pretty impressive. There. So pricing-wise, how much was this, is this? So if Can you I ask one question first? You may. Go for it. How would you compare and contrast that hinge to uh, watch, Lenovo's watch band? Watch band? I mean, it's not as versatile as Lenovo's Hinge. Mm. I think I tend to like it a little bit more. It feels more solid because it it's only trying what, to do one? one one or two things, essentially. You mean the Surface Book when you like yeah, better? The, the Surface okay. Book Hinge is kind of more solid to me than the Watch Band Hinge, which I feel like could just get like crap the only thing I don't accumulated like about that. in it, essentially. The only thing I don't like about that is just that it leaves a gap. Like it doesn't but it's fine. flat. Mind the gap. But like, like what's going to happen in the gap? Well, it's a pretty, like, so you're going to stick a pencil in it. So in, in my backpack, I've got, like, you know, an iPad goes in the pocket right in front of it and stuff. There's, it's kind of like, it's a tight fit. So trying to jam that in there. <laughs> oh, good Lord. You know. Uh, Josh's laughter aside. Uh, I just like it I, I mean, I agree. It's also not the same width all the way across. Right. Right, which is kind of, kind of frustrating. I'm not that worried it about a, that. It I is just, a big laptop because of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't fit in a bag as easily, but yeah. you also you don't get the problem of the keyboard contacting the screen they get in a lot of laptops because it doesn't. Do yeah, that. I do hate so that. That is that is an yeah. advantage. So cost again. Uh, here's here's the sore spot. All right. All right. So new from when they announced this last November, this SKU was sold for two thousand dollars. Currently at Microsoft, you have to select the i seven. Oh, sorry. Oh, the i7 has the discrete GPU. Okay. Uh, it is selling for eighteen fifty, I believe. Ryan's verifying this right now. I don't know add if that was a limited sale or not. Cart add to what, what's going on? Apparently, the Stankin. Microsoft Store doesn't want you to buy it. Is it eight gigs? Yeah. Fifty six. Not yeah. using Edge. No, I thought you had the five twelve no. version. No, yeah, no. Nope. They make you use Edge. Check out of the Microsoft that's, Store. That's the one I had. <laughs> It should display the price up there, from what I remember. It's like not. you aren't supposed to have to. Oh, Anyways, weird. anyway, eighteen fifty, as far as I know, is yeah. the price of this directly from Microsoft. So a little bit of discount from where it launched at. I bought mine at Micro Center for sixteen fifty a couple weeks ago, 
at the time of publishing, it was still that price. I did notice it was out of stock at my micro center as of now. So I don't know if that's like a price it's ending, if they're selling through some it's listed some inventory. as $19.99. Okay, so it's back up to $19.99 for Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. That's way too much to pay for this laptop. I, I think. Huh. I think. Okay, so this was going to be my personal laptop, and at sixteen fifty, after spending some time with it, I returned it this week. Yeah. So I think that says a lot about yeah. where I'm at with it. I think it's a really good laptop if you're someone like a student who need like an engineering student or an architectural student or an artist that needs to have a discrete GPU for like productive purposes, like rendering out rendering out stuff or maybe video editing or something like that. You need a discrete GPU, but still want something you can take to class. You can scribble notes on, but it's an expensive computer for that. Right. It's expensive computer for students. It's just, and the storage performance storage performance is really the straw that broke the camel's back. Once I started looking into that, it's like, I don't want to keep this expensive laptop. If it has that really big Achilles heel, I can do nothing with because you can't upgrade the storage. It's It's a tablet. It's a sealed unit. Just, had too many downsides. All right, read that full review. Up, yeah. it's up on the site now. Uh, and uh, before we jump into the Optane 905P, I did have two uh, new patrons or Ooh. Patreon upgrades. Cronark has edited their pledge from eleven dollars to twelve dollars. Thank you, Cronark. Thank you. And then, uh, oh, geez, uh, we've had <laughs> an edit it from one dollar to five dollars. Man, and there's a reason I did this one before, so we have a whole story before we get to the ad spot mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is uh, Alexa, order me tampons. Edited their pledge from one to five dollars. <laughs> Luckily, my tax on. Yeah, that that did a very very good job, okay. user. Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> said more search results to Ryan's phone. Good oh, job. Oh, Lord. Okay, so thank you for that. Now let's move on to... Uh... Oh, no. no. Please make her stop. Let's stop. Uh, so anyway. Jim's hitting the button. <sighs> okay, uh, let's talk about the Optane 905P. This is a bigger number than the 900P. It is? And it's got LEDs. Unfortunately. Unfortunately? What are you talking about? I don't I mean, I think they look cool. I just So this is an Optane drive. Know. It's an SSD. It's a PCIe add-in card. Um 960 gigs. Here okay, let me let me ask the question that I think everybody else is asking, which is what? Why is this not a nine hundred P? Because it's a different style. Okay, okay sure. Yeah, it's it's the new style four so and three and two and one on is, the mic. What's funny is this is the style that was on that uh, leaked. Uh, when was this leaked? It was like last year, late last year, October. Okay, like that. So this right. leaked, and there was there was the version of the 900P we eventually saw. Yeah, there was this with the LEDs, and yeah. then there was the U.2 variant. Yeah. And you know the top one looked cool. I'm like, oh, that'd be cool if they go with that design. Wow. Um, but you know Ooh. we didn't expect them to because the 900P came out, and. If on that slide, both drives are labeled 900p. Right. So you just kind of figured, well, maybe they were thinking about going that way, and they just didn't. Whatever. Turns out nobody right. needed that. Yeah. Anyway, so, so here it is. So side note, on this picture you're looking at right now, how yeah. many thousands of dollars of SSDs are just laying in a pile in front of it? Oh, uh, like another couple. <laughs> I mean, just a couple of grand. Fair. But actually, the ones you can see are on top of another stack of two and a half inch. Oh, I know. That's I not know. The table. Anyway. Ooh, um, I look red. Yeah, and you can change Green. the colors, but not if you're. So I fed this back to them. Like so a it's, person, it's R, G, it's and R B. or G <laughs> or B. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I fed this back to them because if a person cares about that, they want they want to be able to mix the colors. In the manner of which they would like to to make other colors than just no, R G and B. No, impossible. Um, the technology does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was kind of silly. Like, it's, and the way it's, you have to do it is hilarious. Yeah, you have to have SSD toolbox installed, which not not a big deal. You don't even need the Optane driver specifically installed, uh, but you need their toolbox software installed, and you have to command line the EXE for their toolbox. They didn't like add a GUI for it. No, you there's have no to, GUI. 
yet. I assume they'll probably add one. And maybe when they do, then you can maybe have sliders or something. I don't know. Um, the bonus points, they'll come to, uh, like, I get annoyed with those DRAM that has RGB on it that I, get, I don't get so annoyed with that. I get annoyed with the fact that they default to whatever they were going to do, like pulsing or whatever. Right. Right. And you have to install the software on the system in order to shut that off or whatever you wanted to sure. do with it. Yeah. Different. But it doesn't save the configuration. You have to have that software installed. And right. it has to run. Otherwise, yep. the things do whatever they want to do. Right. With this, you change it. It stays changed. So if you take it out and install it in another system, yeah, I, I literally like I tested it on that system over there, and I went over to my other storage test bed, plugged it in, powered it on, and even though it it flickers for a split second blue when you first turn it on, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I'm Intel. Oh wait, oh wait, he he told me uh, I want to do a different color. Okay, fine, I'll go with that other color. Nice. Right? It has to read the LED configuration from the Optane. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, and that's <laughs> which probably, is keeping it on the side on the Optane. Fortunately for this device, it has some non-volatile. Storage and it can save that, you know, those couple of I mean, that bits was of only, data. you know, an extra 10 to 15,000 gates in the controller to, uh, yeah. uh, kind of push it it's, it's marginal at that process tag. Uh, anyway, okay, so enough so, with all this color. Yeah, yeah. Crap. Are, the, are the specs any different? Uh, the specs are different. The specs are slightly increased over the 900p. Per, per firm, performance or in power or in. Uh, okay, so. Power draw thing is a little bit weird. I asked Intel about it, haven't gotten an answer back yet. We don't have the other product. Because the power draw is higher on the 960 than the 480 by a good amount. Yeah, and we don't have the 480 to test, and the power numbers from the 900P were basically in the middle of those numbers, but regardless of capacity. Cool. So that's kind of confusing. Um, the other thing was 900P was uh, available 480 gig or 280 gig for the standard card. Yep. But if you wanted the U.2 form factor, the 2.5 inch, it was only a 280. Okay. Okay. Now, this line comes at a 960 for the, yep. 960 for, or for 480. the card. Uh, but the 480 is the U.2. Oh, so the only add-in card is 960. Uh, I think the add-in card is only It says half, height, half length add in card 960. Yes. Yeah, small Weird. form factor 2480. Okay. Yeah, so is this just cuz they had 480s left over they slapped a new label on, flashed a new firmware No, too? it's like a different the, the housing is different too. Huh. It's slightly like weird. You know, sleeker looking or whatever you want to call it. Um yeah, there's that. It's it it gives you this weird predicament because the 900P still comes with Star, a Star Citizen license, which is like 50 bucks. Still today? Right, uh, but if you want the bigger 900P, you get this. It does not come with it. Yeah, there was no branding on the box. I'm sure that's a that's a problem for very few people. I guess, but it's a value add thing, right? It's like people that justify yeah. a GPU purchase because it comes with a game or a few games packaged, right? Sure. It's the same thing. Fair enough. I will say um, on April 30th that code sold for 80 bucks on eBay. A couple of times. Yeah, um, see, it's still like, it's still, still, like it is. It is. You can get your money back from it. Yes, people, you can get your money back from it. It comes. It's like you get a unique piece of content within the game that's specific to Optane drives. Why this Optane drive can't get that I piece know. of content? Anyway, so is there a, uh, the controller the same? The memory the same? The controller is the same type. I believe they have upped the clock rate. Is it the same model number of controller? Yes. Okay. But it's a slightly different revision. Intel is weird with their part numbers. Like there's a type, which is the bottom number. The SSL 3D. Yeah. And then SLL 3D. Yeah. And then the top number, every every Optane drive we've looked at is had like a higher number every time. It's okay. like a revision. Um, so no change to the layout, no change to the design. Yeah, all the chips Still are Optane. in the same place. The only thing that's uh, changed to the layout is they added some contacts just to make contact with the um you know with the heat, the RGB. Got to get them LGB con or R oh, RGB LGBs. context. Um, uh, so what what performance page do I want to go to? Uh, just go to straight to like. Uh, well, go yeah. to the go to the focus one for a second. Uh, okay. So Here we had I someone am. we had someone comment in the article, and I just figured we'd clear this up easily. Uh, but they're like, "Hey, why didn't you test with like sustained IOs? You you're treating that you're biased against this drive because." Mm -hmm. uh, you know, unfairly or something. So on the performance focus page of every one of these reviews, since we've done the new type of reviews for like a year and a half now, uh, we have charts that show sustained, which I just call saturated. Like, in other words, you're going as fast as the thing yep. will go at that QDF versus burst. 
And the lines overlap in this in this case. For Optane drives, the yeah. lines are identical. Sure. Uh, I can understand maybe not under not knowing that they overlap, I guess maybe. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it, they're basically the same and it's the same kind of deal for an MLC NAND SSD. If the if it doesn't have caching, those lines are usually gonna be overlapping Got each other, right? Um, but the reason we do burst is so that it's a level playing field with real workloads applied to caching SSDs. Right. Because you would unfairly disadvantage caching SSDs. Right. If you tested them with just like sustained workloads all the all time. Right. Anyway, all right, now what page? Uh do like the mix burst. Boom. From there. It's the easy workload. Um so uh slight increase over previous models. Oh. Uh you can tell the previous models were very consistent between each other, like within the one two capacities. Yeah. yeah. Um you know, very slight increase in, in random writes and random reads. The sequentials also saw the same kind of thing, even though there's not a chart on this page for uh, specifically for sequentials. Um, but if you look at that read service time, and we kind of touched on this when we talked about the 970 Pro last week, um, 970 Pro is 3.7 seconds to read 4 gig total worth of data throughout this mixed process. Kind of, kind of, an, kind of an arduous workload, right? right. And the, that 3.7 seconds would be how long did you wait in total to read that stuff. Uh, and these Optane drives, the 900P, drops that down to 3.4, but you're only shaving, it's like less than 10% of the time right. of an improvement. And there is zero time advantage, even with the slight bump to performance with this model. Yep. So y you're kind of splitting, like you get to this point of diminishing returns, right? Where like, I mean, if you move to a RAM disk, and the computer still has to do something with the data, it's not going to go much faster. Right. Right? It's like, you know, when you're shaving tenths of seconds off of, of a total workload. That, so, you know, what about this, this type of data, right? We're looking at burst 4K client queue depth weighted. There's a huge difference between the, what the 970 Pro shows in terms of reads versus what the 905P shows in reads. Yeah, and that's... So, the workload on MX Burst is a more of a the reads are more akin to sequentials okay. because uh, the round of things we were testing uh, in order to figure out what, like what that workload should be. Um, it was game. It was actually like doom level loads and things like that, which are more sequential, which yep. don't tend to make, you know, large differences for, for SSD specifically. Um, but yeah, for your burst 4k random read result, that's where, you're going to notice more of a difference, but the workload has to support it. It has to be something more like ashes of the singularity loading. You might see a bigger delta there, but again, diminishing returns, like the CPU has to do stuff with that data. Mm -hmm. right? sure. um, if you're really hard on your storage, that where the Optane memory stuff shines, and actually uh, uh, a buddy of mine looped me in on some Facebook thread with one of his buddies the other night, and uh, it was like, the guy was a workstation performance type user. He was doing like kind of bunch of coding and compiling and things that were pulling in a bunch of code from a bunch of different places in order to accomplish the compile. That's the kind of thing that Optane will just sing at because you're, you're, you know, you could see like a four X improvement in that. If it's, if it's the workload, mm. you know, that's where you'd actually see the, the difference uh, that you see in the blue bars in this 4k random read chart, right? It has to be that sort of a workload. that's very heavy on it. Okay. Also, if it's a workload that's, really random write heavy and you're just doing it all the time uh that's where you'd play on this drive specs where it's endurance writing as 10 drive writes per day so if you had this mm. drive it's a it's a terabyte per day you know 10 terabytes per day yep written to the drive like if you're doing that okay it's <laughs> you're bordering on enterprise but this drive fortunately shares you know, beyond enterprise, it, but yeah, it, yeah. I mean, this this, so, this drive is entering into enterprise. Get to the last page here. What uh, I see a problem, however. Yeah. So uh, first, let's 900p pricing. The 480 gig launch at 600 bucks. Remember? Yep, I do. Uh, I checked when I wrote this article. It's actually on sale for 50 bucks off. So it's 550 bucks right now, and you're getting that Star Citizen thing that Ken just said you can sell for 80 bucks if you really wanted to, right? Um, Maybe 80 bucks. Move to this. Well, if you double six hundred, you'd figure twelve hundred. That's probably around what the price would be. This is thirteen hundred. I don't know what your link does, but it's not loading for me. Anyway, go ahead. 
Uh, so this drives 1300 So you're paying, you're already paying $100 premium over the base price, like the MSRP, right. of the 900P. Um, you know, I don't know if the LEDs are worth 100 extra bucks. Uh, I mean, the, probably. The extra capacity might be worth an extra 100 bucks to somebody if they absolutely positively have to have one terabyte on that one sure. device. Sure, capacity, yeah. Um, but that's not usually what we see for... SSD media, right? Typically, it's a cost per gig thing. Usually, it's the same. Well, I was told the this capacity. with Ken earlier, but like when the four gig versions of SATA SSDs first came out, they were more expensive than the one four terabytes. They were more expensive <laughs> than the one terabytes, yeah. right? Cost per gig. Sure, they were. So you know, you can make that argument here, which may be what they're doing. Yeah. So I guess. Did you have to give um, the Western Digital back, or did you just not include it? Uh, no, no, we still have it. Um, yeah. You know, but I, but I included the 970 pro instead because it's which is about the same you know yeah it's it's very similar performance and yeah. we had we wanted to compare it with a higher price point item you know even though that, that ssd is more pricey it does beat uh the western digital product especially on like small random rights i was trying to give mm. the, the best competition possible to this thing because it's usually just wiping the floor with anything with nand in it um not so much anymore and don't forget, uh, if you're doing a lot of sequentials, 970 Pro still did beat this drive handily, regardless of the you know, improvements to the controller and whatnot. It's still only doing less than three gigabytes per second, where a 970 Pro can do like three and a half. Right. Yeah. So you know, can't, it doesn't win everywhere, uh, and it's definitely being held back uh, uh, pretty obviously by the controller, since these are almost the same specs as a, a, a product half the capacity, so it's not like the cross point that's limiting you. It's obviously the controller that's, mm, that's the bottleneck, okay. right? All right, well, check yeah, out that review. The Optane Saga continues. Yeah, yeah it's Optane Saga, so yeah. Check out the review. It's on the website now. Top thing up there as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it live. All right, let's take a quick second here. Thank today's podcast sponsor. This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to all of you, all of you, by mm. Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its lines of pro line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. The Wave by Casper is the most innovative mattress of Casper's to date. The Wave allows you to feel relaxed in ways you never thought were even possible, Josh, giving you deep, restorative sleep. It features temperature-regulating technology to help keep you cool and comfortable without overheating during the night. And whether you're a back, stomach, or sl side sleeper, the Wave gives you the support and relief you need for a good night's sleep. It adjusts your body and curves. Again, talking to Josh. Only the Wave do, has... Do they, do they support harnesses that hang from the ceiling? No, probably not. Probably not. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're laying on the bed, you're laying on the bed, man. Uh, only the Wave has five layers of superior foam, including a cushioning top layer for maximum comfort. And you can try out the Wave in your home for 100 nights risk-free. That's a third of a year almost, guys. It's actually not that close to a third, but it's 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 got it's triple digit nights more than a quarter. Uh, there you go. Buy online and get it delivered to your door in a small compact box. All wave purchases come with in-home white glove delivery and setup for free. Uh, we actually have one of these mattresses now too. We've been up. We've upgraded our Casper mattress. If you no know. way. And uh, it's pretty nice. What did you do with your old one? Uh, moved it to the guest bedroom. As one does. Those, those As you do. <laughs> you, you go, it goes down the tiering status of mattresses, right? Best new mattress goes to me. Hey, Second Dad, best new mattress. By the way, you're uh, <clears throat> sleeping on an old mattress. <laughs> <laughs> For $100 off of your Wave purchase, visit casper.com slash pcper100 and use promo code pcper100. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, I know. That's a hundred dollars off more than the fifty you got last time. Way more. Yep. This is a hundred dollars off your wave purchase by visiting casper.com slash PC per one hundred using promo code PC per one hundred at checkout, and we thank Casper for their support of our They're podcast. Continue. Continued, even even though Josh right. continues to be on the show, and they've asked me repeatedly, can you please remove him from the episodes when Don't we're on? Down. And I say, nope, can't do it. I love Josh Tech too much. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> well, digitally edit him out, so every time it cuts to that scene, it's just this All room right. with no Josh. Let's run through news items. You ready? Three. Oh, we didn't. We didn't migrate down to Casper. Okay, Casper. Oh, Casper, no. moving on. Okay. Uh, we'll fix it in post. Fix it in post. Um, post it in. Intel kicks Cabby Lake X CPUs to the curb. Are you surprised? Really? Are you? <sighs> Boy, so, do you think these sold well? 
No. So a quick no. reminder for people who maybe don't know what we're talking about, which is maybe more of a problem. Uh, Cabby, Lake's, <laughs> Cabby Lake X processors launched with Skylake X, the X299 platform. But these were the oddly positioned quad-core hyper-threaded, quad-core non-hyper-threaded parts in the LGA 20, 2066 socket. Uh, they had, what, maybe 100 megahertz clock speed advantage over their mm -hmm. LGA 1150 counterparts. Um, they didn't have the improved PCI Express lanes that you get with the X299 chipset. That they was the biggest like. They still only use two-channel memory instead of four-channel memory. Yeah. It was a very odd part. The, the, I think the stated goal for Intel at the time was like, yeah, if you want the best possible gaming CPU, this is going to let you get like the best possible platform motherboards we offer. Um, you know, a little bit like with half the features enabled. Yeah, you know, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, 100 megahertz of frequency and maybe some extra overclocking headroom because you got this different heat spreader and all this other blah, blah, blah. Um, and I have a quote in here from like my review of it. Uh, well, actually, we didn't even review that part when I was ta doing about talking about the launch of Skylake X. When we mentioned the Cabby Lake X, um, I called these. These are very dot, 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 interesting CPUs. <laughs> um, I'm not sure and Intel hasn't said yet. But what they have stated is they want to offer the option for consumers the absolute fastest gaming process. Well, clearly that didn't work out because uh, this week they we got this guy, the product change notification, aka end of life. Uh, on April 30th, this occurred for the Core i7 7740X, 7640X. Uh, I'm honestly not sure we ever found a reason to plug our 7740X in. Yeah, I don't know if it's ever been yeah, in that's yeah. true. That's true because I just have too many threads. I need to get rid of some. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many PCI Express lanes. Please shed them from and this motherboard. I would motherboard. like to yeah. use an expensive motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to buy a more expensive <laughs> motherboard, a more expensive cooler. Yes, all of these things, please. So they're they're killing it off. Um, the you know the program support begins May seventh. Uh, the last order date is November. So if you really need some more, you can you can still order some of these if so you're. What does an OEM. that mean? Program support. I don't really like, know. I don't, I don't Product know. discontinuance program support begins May seventh. So like, is they have meetings? I like, guess they're, they're they're providing support on these parts through May third, May thirty first, twenty nineteen. Yes. Okay. So, and that's, yeah. But you won't be able to buy them from Intel after November 30th. Okay. Yeah. They'll yeah. be in the channel. I'm sure that's they will. That's sure. Yeah. They'll be and cheap, if yours baby. dies, then, and you're still in the warranty period, you can get replaced until 2019. Yeah. But, hmm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. These were parts without a real audience, and their creation was a consistent mystery to the enthusiast market Intel targeted. The one thing they've been used for is, like, very, very high-end LN2 overclocking for single-threaded scores. Okay. Because you get the extra power delivery and TDP for a yeah, makes sense. Cabby Lake part. It was an attempt by Intel to try to guess what people really wanted from their platforms, and they just guessed that wrong. It was a really bad guess. <laughs> guessed wrong. Skylake X is still a great platform. Lanes, it would have been awesome. Yeah, right. like if it had... But then, it, then it's a different CPU. Yeah. 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 That's the problem. Like a quad-core... That's not just that's not why you go to the X299 platform for, right? Like you just that's just not what it was. I don't know. All right. Uh so that's depressing and or exciting depending on or who, completely boring. Who you ask. Yeah. Uh Jeremy, what do you got here? This is Cooler Masters Master Air <laughs> MA621P, an air cooler for Threadripper. And it comes in Mori size too. <laughs> what are the what are the like bulges at the top? Heat the pipes. The, heat pipe covers. Heat no, pipes. No, the other these things. The decoration. You know, if you have to ask, <laughs> you can't afford it. Uh, um, it's they're, they're, they're cooling lumps. I mean, uh, okay. It actually looks like there are fins in there, so like it's just like a fin extension. Oh, answer for this. Yeah, it's hard to find a good. Uh, so, Jeremy, what they say about it? Anything it. interesting? Uh, well, I mean, Cooler Master's got a couple of water coolers out there for Threadripper. Uh, and the one thing about them that's all the same is that not only are they effective, they tend to cost northwards of $100. Okay. So this is, it's supposed to be retailing for about $70, $75. It seems to be creeping up towards the $90 portion, but it, it is an inexpensive cooler for Threadripper that you don't plan on overclocking because it, it just doesn't have what it takes to overclock uh, the, the 2700X. It just, at uh, 
Stock speeds, no problems whatsoever. Uh, decent 58 degrees or so, decent noise levels, but it, it just it won't overclock. On the other hand, if you don't want to deal with water cooling, but you do want to have a million and one PCIe lanes, it's it's a decent choice to take a look at. I bet you and, there's a I bet you there's an RGB controller. Well, it has RGB on the box, so Un- yeah. Under, I'm just saying under I better those, believe it's got RGB under those boxes. It, you know what the best the thing about that Maybe. is? No oh god, it does no, more what? than just red or green or blue. <laughs> no, it's it's got a wide base, so it covers a large amount of the heat spreader. Mm. Yeah. Well, I would hope so if it's a thread ripper specific. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. not got the greatest mounting, but uh, I mean it. It, it works. does have a wide base. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it also weighs a lot. Yeah, it's one point two kilos. It's freaking huge. Good lord! That's, look that's, at those pipes. Yeah. That's like, a lot. That's, that's a lot. Cool. It's just impressive uh, yeah. to look at. You have to peel the label <clears throat> in that direction of the arrow. No. It, what's the arrow for? There's a tab there, Alan, to pull it off with. Uh, warning. Uh, warning. For people who wouldn't notice it on their own. I see. Well, that it's hard to see, It is hard to see in the picture. That has happened. People have... Oh, some, left somebody, the plastic on? Oh, sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I understand oh, the yeah. need for the warning. I agree that the but arrow... those are not super confusing. pipes. Let us make that perfectly clear. No, 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 no. Only oh, The only super no. pipes that exist anymore, Josh, are on our t-shirts. So <laughs> That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. You know. All right, uh, it is not April anymore, but the Windows 10 April update is out, kind of. <laughs> Somebody thought <laughs> it was a time. leap year, I think, so they had an extra day. <laughs> uh, I actually updated to RS4 on one of my machines today, so that's exciting. Yeah. It's actually funny they're calling it the April update when it's version 1803, which means at some point they intended to release it in March. <laughs> Is that what yeah, that means? Like, yes. <laughs> oh, you know what? I never and, and they, they sort of did. Yeah. Hence, seventeen oh nine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's definitely yeah. not March. They released yeah. it in March, and it, it sort of went horribly. <laughs> so they pulled it, and it took about a month to fix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've got HDR, uh, this is supposed to add a lot more support because yeah. we all know that lately Windows has not supported HDR very well at all. I'm just gonna go ahead and say not. Ken, not did you the try best it on that? Still, you tried it over there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just. It's bad. It doesn't fix the core issues with HDR on the eh. desktop. Yeah. But you you can't fault the uh, glowy mouse cursor. You can have a glowy mouse cursor now. Mm. Does anybody care about the features? Uh, such as I don't focus even know what assistant. The features are. I just Timeline. updated so it didn't automatically update me. Edge improvements, dictation, what's new for IT pros, what's cool for developers, and a sizzle video. There are some I, new I, Windows I, Linux subsystem stuff that's cool. Yeah. If you're doing I've that heard stuff. Timeline's pretty good. It allows you to like open up applications and it and states that like you had closed previously huh. type of thing. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Application has to support Let's it. Let's you go right? back in time to past activities you've worked on across your devices, so you can oh. jump back into them like you never left. So well, that's interesting. Yeah, neat. I, I could. I might be able to. I might be able to appreciate that. We'll see. Maybe not, but we'll if see. Only they hadn't taken your Windows Phone away, so that you Ugh, can't do you that know? phone anymore. Yeah, I know. Uh, what about Cortex M? Physical security. The hardening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Josh does this on his own, guys. We don't need to, we don't oh, need to tempt him. Hardening. Um, <clears throat> so what? what is... So we, we talk about chip security all the time, but what is the difference here they're talking about with physical security? Is this like okay, so electroshocking you know if I Things try to touch it? Things like Spectre, Meltdown. Yep. It's, it's code that gets injected into the CPU, and it does interesting things. You know, it, it reads, uh, you know, pre-read cache lines in, in protected L1, um, you know, stuff like that. But that's all software. What about the guys who actually get a hold of the processors and have it go through its little cycles and communicate with the mothership, but they do things like they change the voltage inputs and see how the chip reacts, or they monitor the EM uh, output when... Uh, doing say like encryption they can learn a lot of things about the chip if they've got the knowledge also about uh you know stuff like i'm going to take off the lid and i'm going to grind this down and i've got an electron microscope and i'm going to see where all these traces go and what they do huh. well physical attacks like that you can you can counteract two out of those three 
I mean, if somebody steals a chip, grinds it down, and uses uh, um, uh, equipment that is not normally found outside of an educational uh, environment or, uh, you know, a fabrication uh, or, uh, you know, a fab, then, then, you know, not much you can do about that. However, people monitoring EM and voltage, they can. So... You know, stuff like this, I think, has previously been done in, in, in mil spec type chips where they actually don't want you snooping about anything. And so, for example, to to do with anti tamper and, and um, oh, EM, you you have transistors not actually doing anything, but giving off. You know, or, or or switching, or I mean, they didn't Just go into great fun. detail <laughs> about this, obviously, because they they don't want people to get around their their workarounds. But you know, they're they're kind of making the field dirty, and not dirty in the way that I usually talk about, but rather, you know, they they take coherent information that you would typically get, and then they add a whole bunch of noise to it. And that's essentially what they're doing with EM. The voltage, they went into even less detail about what they're doing there. Oh, sure. So if you, you know, adjust the voltage at different places and different times and seeing what the reaction is, somehow they have, you know, perhaps some extra capacitance in there. I, I don't know. Huh. Or, or uh, you know, grounds and, and, and power are, are swapped around or intermingled in ways that we hadn't thought of where it's not as big a deal. But these are physical things that, you know, can in reality. I mean, okay, think about one of the first real physical hacks that, that you remember. And that's the original Xbox. Alan, you remember that? I do. I still have it. Well, I know. Okay, I'm not talking about the Xbox, but what they did to crack. I don't know if I ever heard this. The encryption. I'm well, curious. they had oh. physical feeds in between the North Bridge and the South Bridge yeah. that they monitored. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they, they were sniffed, able they sniffed to sniff the bus and got it. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's the kind of physical uh, security that they're looking to address. Huh. Makes sense. So they're putting this in the uh, M35P, the Cortex M35P. It's not a new Cortex core. I think it's based on the M33. But they gave it a higher, you know, uh, M number as well as the P, which stands for physical protection. Got it. And they also did the crypto cell and the crypto island controllers that are inside other Cortex processors. And they're trying to, you know, if you look at that little puzzle piece thing, they're trying to address as many vectors as possible right with this security so yeah don't don't sniff the bus can you scroll for a minute right just this a one? little bit a little bit more this one uh let's get to the amazon ads on the right hand side oh yeah i liked when josh was talking about grinding down <laughs> ships and electron microscopes <laughs> <laughs> that was in our recommended list. Amazon's listening. Well, you think that'll do it? <laughs> um, no. Not quite. Mm. It looks pretty cool, though. Yeah. Look a yeah, lot. It does. <laughs> I'm the reason that <laughs> is there on our network uh, for our IP and the Amazon suggestions. That's your pick of the week. The other day. <laughs> huh. Interesting stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, popping up twice here. Oculus Go has launched. Jeremy, you posted this up. What What are the details on uh, on this new product? Well, what I'm most curious about is how the barber cuts your hair around the straps while you're wearing this because you're not <laughs> interacting with them in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, yeah. However, you know, apart from that, uh, it's 200 bucks, which is a good price for convincing people to come in. It doesn't require any wires, as you can see. Uh, there's no wires coming off ELF there. A huge uh, hurdle for a lot of people trying to adopt uh, VR. On the other hand, they, they've certainly trimmed quite a bit off of it. Uh, so the refresh rate will be either 60 hertz, or you can overclock it at 72 hertz, which is weird because Oculus has always sworn 90 hertz is where it has to be true. To be true. I don't know if you've played with it, but from what people are saying at 72, I mean, if you're familiar with a 90 hertz refresh, you can tell the difference, but otherwise it's not too bad. 
And the 2560 by 1440 combined resolution is impressive, but there's no slider for adjusting your pupillary depth. So you, that's true. You kind of got to hope your head fits it properly. Yeah. Well, on like the other not, hand, you know, software? shaving this much off of it is decent. Uh, like, it's a decent price. It's a decent sacrifice for the price. What got me was at the very end of the article at ours that I read where you have to download an app, fire this app on your smartphone to be able to even turn the damn things on. And you've got to be providing your GPS location while it's going, which seems ridiculously Facebookish. Wait, this has, time when this has GPS to, in it? Your phone does. Yeah, and it's got a GPS in it. What's my phone got to do with it? I don't know. Uh, there's in order to use phone. it, you've got to download a phone app. Uh, and then run uh, that phone app. No? Um, I don't think you need to run the phone app past the initial setup. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once it's set up, I can buy things in the store here and do whatever I want in this. You know, it's, it's really unfortunate that you didn't get multiple of those and then have everybody put, like, <laughs> one on. Every, you know, every time the ca- camera switches and then somebody else is wearing it and suddenly everybody's just got... I this figure this is how we're all set. we'll all be podcasting like this soon. People who are watching the podcast will be watching the, like Quick, this. Alex, soon. we need another camera. Broadcast this stuff in stereo. Yeah. Yes. Get on it. I can't wait to do a live podcast. There, There's the hundreds way. of people all wearing oh, these. Doing He's doing, doing an extra work. Them. Oh, unlike the rest of us. He's <laughs> editing the uh, mailbag. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've had mine for two days now. Man, it was dark in there. Now it's yeah. very bright out here. <laughs> right. I didn't actually have it on, so it was just—it was a nice, peaceful. Like I was gonna take a nap while you guys were talking. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. So far, so good. I've been using it for a couple of days, day and a half or so. Uh, no, just about a day. And uh, I watched like I used it for like an hour and a half straight last night, which has been, it's been a long time since I've used a VR headset the, the for visual, that long straight. The visual quality. The screen quality is significantly better than I expected it to be for yeah. a $200 device, 250 for the 64 gig model. For, it is uh, missing being something. very familiar with the Rift and uh, the yeah. Vive, how does it compare? It's annoyingly better than the Vive. Really? Like, just, you're able to read text. Like, and anybody that with the Vive will understand what I mean by that. Like, if you have something in front of you that's like has print on it, and you're trying to read it within the environment, you just it's like, you know, it's tiresome to try to do that. You have to concentrate. It's, it's 1998 to, textures. It, yeah, yeah, basically. 256 and like, by 256. Well, that's high definition. It's not so much the textures; it's just the way that like it's a combination of the display because that's not OLED. Right, it's a it's like a sideways mounted LCD, I think. Yeah, um, uh, it's a combination of that and just the way that they're doing the drawing to the screen, and it's not you know the pentile pattern or whatever it is of of OLED. Um, so it's yeah. just all that comes together, and you just there's not the crazy aliasing going on. If there's something on the screen you're trying to read that you need to be able to read clearly, it's very easy to do so. You don't have to concentrate to do it. You don't have to try to. Your eyes don't have to try to like figure out what pixels are making what letters. You know, on the words you're trying to read. Um, yeah. And then I thought that the lenses were. Uh, I thought the lenses were not Fresnel, no, but they are. they are. They are. They are. It must be. Um. Yeah. I mean, it just. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like as, I said, we'll have more on that soon. As Chet cool. points out, there's one thing missing. What? Googly eyes. Googly eyes. Yeah. I'm just uh, seeing some yeah. googly eyes. Yeah. And this one you can do it on because it won't interfere with anything. Yeah, there's no sure, IR sure. emitters <laughs> and or receivers uh, on that side of it. So. And as Alan mentioned the lenses, the cool thing with this is it comes with like the brackets so you can order prescription lenses from some company. There's like one company they're partnering with where you can it's order your there. prescription to put oh. in there. But are these some so kind of smart to worry about the glasses to really fit yeah. hardcore glasses on yeah. it? So are these falling under some other standard for that, or are these? No, I think there's get... a bracket that like mounts lenses in front of those lenses or something. Oh, oh like, there's yes, another correct. bracket involved. Yeah. Yo, dog. Mm-hmm. I hear you, you like, like lenses. lenses. In front of your lenses. <laughs> All right, our last news item here: Seven Brown new fans. So, is this really our last one? Yes. No. 
Well, it's the one on the rundown. Do you want to talk about anything else? Oh, after yeah, sure. This? Talk about this oh, real fast. Please. Okay, let's talk about Noctua, the tan and brown. I'm not going to talk about it. I don't know a damn thing about them other than the color. They're fans. Fans. Jeremy. They're fans that are apparently Etchings. significantly better than the old fans, which is exciting. Yes, that seems impossible. the old fans were really good. What's it's Improbable, but not impossible. Uh, uh, one of the interesting things they did across these series is they're now made from Sterox liquid crystal polymer. So sure. supposedly this is much, uh, much stronger material. It won't flex as much and it won't expand from heat. So your fans in theory are going to be much quieter. Huh. Uh, of the, there, there's two series, the uh, NF a 12 by 25s and the NFP 12s reduxes. Uh, the, a12s come with a PWM as well as uh, one that'll come with an adapter that makes it much, much quieter, but at the cost of losing a lot of your Airfoil. Uh, static pressure. Yeah. And a second one which comes with two different adapters, so you can sort of balance between how quiet you want it versus how much cooling power you want to lose. The other uh, NFP12s come in three different the 1700, the 1300, and the 900, and you're never going to guess what those numbers stand for. Um, go ahead, Alan. I don't know. So if you want a 900 RPM fan that, <laughs> oh, that runs okay. at about 0.6 decibels, <laughs> get the uh, 900. Okay. If you don't mind a 25 decibel noise, get the 1700. And last but not least is a fancy little adapter, which you can use to connect these two radiators. And even like a, even though it's a 120 mil fan, mm. this will put it onto a 140 mil uh, fan ad- ad- adapter for a radiator. And they're supposedly have enough static pressure at this point that they can effectively cool on a radiator because that's not something Noctua has really gotten into ever. Yeah. So this is a new interesting thing from them. And honestly, as much as people seem to despise the color scheme on them, I, I've always found these some of the better fans on the market. And it'd be interesting to see what these new ones are like. They're great. I just wish more of them came in black. They do make the older versions of these in black, so I assume that they'll make the new versions in black. Well, the funny thing is that the uh, Redux series, everything's in grayscale. I looked at it and went, okay, you know, a gray fan kind of works. And then I'm like, wait a second, the (laughs) packaging is also in grayscale. Uh I I don't think that this is actually a gray fan. (laughs) And run in between, uh, what is it, uh, 12 bucks for the one series and 30 bucks for the other. And you will upgrade a case that's getting a little bit uh, hot and stuffy. The pricing oh. is actually kind of the big surprise here. They've been teasing these fans for a long time. They've, they've been working on it for like four or five years. Like mm-hmm. this has been a long R&D project. They're really excited about them. But the rumor was that they were going to be expensive because they needed to recoup all that R&D costs. Like 50, like 50 bucks maybe north of that. But... For the prices they're hitting, they seem like they're going to be a great, yeah. in a maybe, great maybe, position. Maybe they've been recouping too much R&D cost on the current ones that they're still selling for super high prices. <laughs> well, and no RGBs and no RGB controllers, so that shaves a bit off as well compared to some of the other competition. True. All right. Uh, two more patrons, one more news story before we get to the picks. Uh, we have a, a new pledge of $5 from I rinse after every stroke. <laughs> Ryan rocks pledge five dollars. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. And then increasing their pledge to four oh nine is it's not the same without Josh Walrath. My name is Clay. Well, I mean Josh is here. I understand that, so I appreciate the pledge nonetheless. But Josh is here most of the time. Most of the time. But you know what? Uh, I I applaud the hygiene of the person Rinsing. before that. Yeah, yeah. I do rinse between every stroke. So uh, let's talk about the last bit here. Josh, Jim Keller leaving Tesla, going to Intel. What's uh-huh. su- what's surprising yeah. about that? Well, um, a lot of things. Shall we count the ways? That's an old picture, by the way. That's the. I, I'm not sure what he looks like now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe well, not you mean after Intel hooked him? I, I, but the best thing about that picture is that he's got the same hairstyle as I had in as a freshman in high school, where it was parted down the middle yeah, with yeah. kind of some feathering to the sides. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I will what, have what's, to dig up pictures one day. What's but, the importance <clears throat> of uh, of this move here? Okay, well, you know what? 
Jim has done some pretty impressive things at AMD and pretty much at every stop that he has ever made. I believe he was a digital guy before AMD caught them up. He was a a significant mover and shaker in the K7 and also uh, defining AMD 64, which eventually turned into all of Athlon 64, uh, all of Intel stuff and everything that we're running in 64-bit on x86. Now, every place he's gone, he's had a very positive impact. After AMD, he went to PA Semi, which was then bought up by Apple. Um, You can talk at length about the quality of silicon that Apple has in their iPhones from about the i5 on, which essentially utilized... PA semiconductor mm. silicon okay. that he was primarily the lead for. Uh, he went back to AMD. Uh, he he worked on the K12 and the uh, the Zen architecture that we see today. Before Zen was released, he went and left the company and, and went over to Tesla and uh, mm-hmm. started working on the silicon for their auto you know self driving stuff and uh somehow he has been well i mean with a face like that who could say no let's scroll down to raja <laughs> he's just peeking scroll over the down. top he's just po- he's just peeking up he's, he's saying hello he's, there the eyes. Eyes. The eyes. Man, how did you say no to that face <laughs> jim come and work with me i've got plenty of peppers for you and he does because peppers would be like A tremendous amount of money. So Jim is not, uh, as far as I know, working on core architecture, but he is working on SOC and integration. So we could probably look at Infinity Fabric, and I bet that he had a huge amount to do in there. And Infinity Fabric is, is not just data transfer, but it's also monitoring, voltage control, and about a dozen other things that... Did I say data fabric or infinity fabric? I don't know. Infinity. Anyway. Um, and so they're, he's, he's aimed at, at improving silicon integration in between compute parts. So that may mean CPUs, GPUs, other accelerators, NVMe control. Who the hell knows? I mean, it's all PCI Express. It's just all of that stuff that, that Intel feels that they had – Less than optimal performance in. And, of course, you know, Raj is is now head of all architectures, essentially. And this is a uh, this is a big deal for Intel because typically they get guys from the bottom and promote them. And those guys eventually get to the top. They rarely, rarely bring in anybody not from the Intel family. Right. Yeah. You know, when they Except hire in 2018 where they just go AMD school, crazy. Yeah, and so suddenly we have all of these guys coming in to Intel that didn't rise up to the ranks, and they're bringing a different um, mindset. And I think that it's probably a good thing for Intel. It's probably a good thing for the marketplace, because if you look at Intel's architectures through the past 10 years, they have not evolved in I mean, in small ways, sure, but in significant ways, I mean, people who have, I mean, people are just still retiring now. I nine, I seven, nine twenties, and that was a two thousand eight, two thousand nine product. Yep. And uh, you know the the next generation after that, the uh, what twenty six hundreds, twenty seven hundreds, people are still using them because. They work perfectly fine for right. the vast I have a majority of K at home. It still works just fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing and this on a 920. They have, I mean, you could say that they have stagnated. They've done things that they've integrated more features in. They've done AVX to, you know, 128, 256, mm-hmm. now 512. Um, they've sprinkled in. Uh, little extra features and performance. I mean, they still got class leading IPC for their products, but 
it has just slowed down to a crawl. And especially when we look at manufacturing issues that they're having, why would you upgrade? I mean, the 8700K yeah. is is a very good part. But if you had a 7700K, if you really didn't need those extra threads, would you really upgrade? If you're just playing games, you're doing some basic video streaming. Probably not. No reason I mean, honestly, most of the upgrade drivers have been add-ins. USB 3.1 or Thunderbolt support. Uh the addition of NVMe support. It's not directly related to their chip, but it's just, hey, if I need that motherboard that supports it, I guess I've yeah. got to buy a new chip, I guess. Yeah. It's so exciting. Bringing in Keller, bringing in Raja, and now we've got Hook and Marketing, obviously going to have a huge amount of impact on engineering in the company. He's never going to talk to me again, is he? No. <laughs> he wasn't going to before. It's Does fine. he talk uh, to you now? No. No, but, uh, you know, Keller, Raja, these guys, uh, they're bringing in some new ideas. They're, they're shaking things up and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's good for Intel. It's good for the market and, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of bad for AMD, but at the same time, they're, they're leaving holes in AMD that, you know, somebody has got some good ideas and are aggressive. They could be promoted and fill those areas, and yeah. uh, you know we'll, we'll see a new level of competition in between these two guys. And uh, you know certainly it's, it's going to be a couple of years before we see the fruits of their labor, but it certainly is something when we're looking into 2019 and how Intel probably is going to struggle against its smaller adversary. That 2020, 2021 is, is going to be very, very important for the company. And these guys are going to be shaping that future. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Exciting. All right. Now we will move on to our hardware software picks of the week. Uh, we won't talk about mine any more than we already did because I mine was going to be the Oculus Go. I didn't I forgot that we had had a story in line for it already. 199 bucks. For the 30, 30, for the thirty two gigabyte version, it does come with a controller. You were showing that while I was blinded. Yes, maybe. Okay, sort Thank of. You. Um, what, what does it say? Get it for eighty eight bucks. Uh, it's if you do like financing or something. Oh, I don't want to finance. Oh, no, after any... trade in, I don't know what you're trading. You got to trade some stuff in. Uh, uh, got to uh, trade in your uh, Legend of Zelda to get it. Okay, I've, I've got some other type bought, of hairs Brian. that I recently got rid of. Is this stuff you bought? Am I logged in as you? Yes, I oh. am. Kenneth. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Start oh, no. trading stuff in. Start trading it. Bye, bye, bye. That's why that pick, or that uh, ad was uh, something Ken yeah, was looking more at. Like, microscope? Uh, <laughs> uh, Ken was looking for Pop. microscope. Oh, oh, funny Josh. Yeah. All that's right. Okay, um, so that's <laughs> Oculus Go. Uh, let's see. What do we have here next? Jeremy, you'll be up next. And then Josh... And then Alan, go ahead. Cheers. Uh, well, speaking of, you know, reasons to upgrade being mostly the motherboard, a uh, really decent deal on a B350 from AS Rock. It's got all of the things you would want. And it's got it a will, place to put your processor. Mm. It's got a place to add memory. Mm. Mm. It's true. It's That's got it. the RGB infection. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> twos. And if you want to go American, it's uh, only 70 bucks. So at 90 bucks Canadian or 70 American, it is just a great way to go with, uh, well, you know, Pineapple Ridge. Promontory. 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 Speaking of promontory. You know, That's a word. Okay. It's the Promontory chipset. Anyway. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Josh, have you already picked this? No, not this one. And only those. Is it a wheel? No. No, it's not a wheel. It's an instant it's an pot. Instant pot. It's the newest one. <laughs> like a you got to go up on this quick. You already broke oh, it. Oh, new improved. Oh, yeah, I got instant previous pot. Versions. What? <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. I got the previous version of the instant pot here, and I love it. I mean, it does fantastic things to your food. Fantastic. You want to thaw things and defrost them quickly? Oh, God, do I. It then, yeah, you just throw it in the Instant Pot. If you want to make perfect rice, Instant Pot. But this, this is the latest generation, and it's <laughs> almost 50 bucks off. Well, it's 40 bucks off. How uh, instant does it make rice? Well, let's just say that the sterilized function, it will take Ryan longer to shave. 
is no, going mean, to have really. to sterilize it between like, each stroke. They I, call it Instant Pot, mm, and it's supposed to make rice and stuff. So how but fast it does it make rice? Stuff. But, but I, I, you know, okay. So, you know, I, I make rice the traditional way, and it's either too crunchy or I burn the crap out of it at the bottom just, of the Just the how pot. long? How long? Like 15 minutes. <laughs> That's not instant. Ah. <sighs> My wife makes rice faster than 15 minutes for dinner. How? Yeah, but rice. that's instant rice. Yeah. If you did instant rice, rice. Yeah. instant pot. Okay, so if you <laughs> take a solid chunk of two pounds of hamburger that's been frozen, uh-huh. you put it on the trellis, you put it in the instant pot, 20, 20 minutes, I think it, and it is perfectly done. It's a pressure cooker, Alan. It is. It is. It's a pressure cooker that is I'm, I'm easy to you. use, that you can't unlock it when it's under pressure, Unlike some people who try to do that with traditional pressure cookers, and you see Ooh. the results. I hear oh. a challenge. How Do quickly it. does it heat up? Is that maybe what the limiting factor is? It, it heats up very quickly. Oh, okay. It doesn't need so to heat up as quick because it's under pressure. No, it still it has yeah, to it heat up. It doesn't so, heat hold up on. I got a question. I got a question. Maybe Jeremy can answer this one. So, this pressure. is cake maker. Okay. Yeah. This is yogurt maker. Right? You see yep. that? This is sterilized. It's you can't it see it. It's a palm. jam, baby. That's jam. You're sterilizing oh. your jam for oh. a canning. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes. I thought I thought this was sterilizing the device itself. You, know, you put in the blood of the sense. unwashed. <laughs> yeah. You can and you sterilize a it family a little of four bit. to six okay. people apparently. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> okay, got it. All right. Uh, you can make uh, the, okay. the best thing that we ever made was about six to eight hour. Type chili in only about 40 minutes. Yeah. Interesting. Nobody was passing any terrible gas afterwards because, you know, if you don't, you you still don't want your all the bacteria chili now. simmer, <laughs> bad things happen. And you can do stews and chilies really rapidly and have just as good results. And 109 bucks, usually 150. So take right. that. Right. Alan, what do you got? So uh, after looking through the um, Oculus Go, Oculus Go yep. yeah, and getting frustrated again because, you know, when I went home that night, I tried the Rift again. I was like pissed off yeah, because I just wasn't angry enough just by trying that. I just wanted to do the comparison again. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, there's got to be some way to like possibly make this better. Surely by now. And sure enough, I Googled around a bit and uh, there's a thing I'm going to try. Uh, so my suggestion first is if you have a Vive, and you don't like the image quality, you should buy uh, some Gear VRs. Okay. Just one is fine. But uh, I would assume so. Uh, the 2016 model goes for like 25 bucks on Amazon. Okay. Now, there's a, there's a means to this end, end here. Uh, Please get to it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that product did not have Fresnel lenses. Uh-huh. It had solid lenses. You take those lenses out. There is a Reddit thread with all sorts of information that I'm linked. To. They'll be in the show notes. Um, and it walks you through the whole thing. And if you have a 3D printer or a buddy with a 3D printer, you print out these little adapter things. You take, you pop the lenses out of the Gear VR, put them in the adapters, slide the adapters into the Rift. And you're using different lenses with the Rift uh, that are not okay. Fresnel, right? Um, there's... A small compromise you have to work around is that the different kind of lens introduces barrel distortion, but you can correct for that because you just have to basically tell us, um, tell Steam VR like through a configuration file to correct in a different manner. Okay. For the new for the new type type of optical distortion is there. Steam VR is, you know, it's designed to be able to handle stuff like that, right? Yeah, you can go in and mess with that file and change your oversampling and whatnot if you wanted to increase your effective resolution, right? Um, so anyway, there's a way to do it. Uh, and it's super cheap. I mean, you know, you get an old thing that used to sell for 100 bucks that's not really worth anything to most people anymore since it's been superseded on, like at least one time over now. Yep. Um, you know, you pick it up on the cheap for like 20 or 25 bucks and... So you haven't actually done this. You don't know if it actually does anything. I have spoken to multiple people that I know that have rifts that have done it themselves. That You're not answering the question, no, Alan. I haven't, I haven't done it myself, but <laughs> I know at least one person that's as picky as I am about the optical sort of stuff, and he was like immediately like, yeah, like I've already done that to mine. Definitely do it to yours. So, 
Why would they use Fresnel lenses if it's so much worse? It's not that it's worse. It's right that now. they're going for different types of Sorry. trade-offs. Like it's more picky about your IPD setting with non-Fresnel lenses. It's more picky about the headset being exactly on your face correctly, right? Fresnels can kind of, you know, things don't distort and go crazy when your headset okay. shifts around, right? So it's like when they design also for that one. Um, it's like when they design them, they have to balance those trade-offs. And if you're kind of pickier person that will be more like predictable on how you put the headset on and you're going for, you know, things being set up properly, your yeah. IPD actually being set properly and everything, then you stand to get a better, like not field of view, but whatever that, that like sweet spot, people call it the sweet spot on VR stuff, like the portion of the screen where you don't get any kind of distortion mm -hmm. at all, right? Usually if you do look up near the far edges with your eyes, things will start kind of going a little bit wonky. It like almost using these other lenses, as long as everything else is set up properly, it almost like doubles the, the sweet spot area. Okay. So, you know, and, and it makes things supposedly makes them sharper. There've been, um, we'll try it, bring it in and we'll give it a shot. Yeah. There've been, Does this mean I have to fix my 3d printer. Your 3D printer is broken? 3D printers are always broken. 3D, that's the continual state of 3D printers. Either, it is either actively <laughs> printing or in a broken state. <laughs> and actually, usually, it can be in both of those. Yeah. Where the print comes out. I'm pretty like, sure I yeah. know what's wrong. All right, here. everybody. That's going to be it for the show. Thank you for joining us. PCPer.com slash podcast. Go there. Find show notes, links. That's it. Just find all the stuff there. Uh, and we'll be back next week with another, another episode. 499 is next week, guys. It's See close. Ya. 499. See ya.